Good morning and a very warm welcome to St. Michael's on St. Columbus Day. Let us worship God together, call each other to worship using the words on the screen. Let us gather. With words of <clears throat> life. Rules for living and invitations to be the future. Let us get up, gather. In the name of the one who leads us into life and worship. Let us worship God and sing, O God, thou art the Father, words which St. Columbus wrote. Today to hear of prophets, to listen for your word, to be part of the community of faith, your family, to experience your presence. May we be as quick as Moses to bow down, as eager as the prophet Samuel to serve, and as passionate as St. Columba to share your love. Lord, we've arrived here with different experiences and from different places and backgrounds. Help us to let go of preconceptions which prevent us from finding you now. Help us to be open to different perspectives as we join with the fellowship of, our, of other believers. Lord, we also come asking your forgiveness for times when we were stubborn and not listening to you, when we ignored your will, or when we were so preoccupied that we just couldn't hear your voice. Lord, open our hearts to your presence. Forgive our hard-heartedness and help us to live our lives in love, always seeking you first. Merciful God, we are grateful for the reassurance of your steadfast love. We thank you for your generosity and your grace. And in Jesus Christ, we ask all these things and pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallo, 
your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> right. Here is my bag. Hello, Rosie. Now, I've, I've got another picture today, and it's, it's, but I didn't bring it. I forgot, I actually tried to bring it out, and I forgot to pick it up from downstairs. So we have to look at it together with everybody on the screen there. Can you see what's on it? Can you see that man? What's he standing in? It's supposed to be a boat. Can you see him standing in a boat? That brown thing? And he's standing there and there's a sail. It's a sailing boat, isn't it? And the wind is pushing them along. And sometimes it was a, a dangerous journey going across the sea. Do you know the, shall I tell you the, the name of the man in the boat? He's called Columba. He came from Ireland and he's traveling with his friends. Can you see the other men sitting there in the boat? Yeah? Can you see the men? One, two, three, four, five, and the man with the stick? Six. Six men and Columba. Well, actually it was twelve, but they didn't put them all on that picture. So, Columba came with 12 of his friends from Ireland to Scotland. That's where we are. We're in Scotland, aren't we? Yeah. And why, do you know why he came from Ireland and what he did in Scotland? Shall I tell you what he did in Scotland? He told people about God. He was a bit like, well, a little. I'm not quite like Sir Columba. But Columba came to Scotland to tell everybody about God and Jesus and all the stories that are in the Bible. Are you going to look at one of these stories? Look, I put a bookmark in here for one of the stories that we're going to, to read today. Maybe Mummy will read it to you. Yeah? No, Mummy is turn, turning slides. Don't know who's going to read the story to you. Somebody will. Oh, Robert. Probably. And then I also wonder if you wanted to do some coloring of, of this cross because because the Celtic people, when, when Columba came, they, they made beautiful patterns. Can you see all the patterns on the cross? See all the lines? You can take your finger and go right around it like that. And maybe you can take a pencil and color them all in. And it makes a beautiful pattern, doesn't it? And that's called a Celtic cross. And Columba would have seen one of them. But have fun, and we're going to think some more about Columba. Let's sing, God of Great and God of Small.
Our first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 34, verses 4 to 8. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means pleading the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed down to the ground and worshipped. The second reading today is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3. <clears throat> now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and the visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to go dim so that he couldn't see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know that the Lord, the word of the Lord, and it had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
Danny and Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blasphemed to God, and even he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning when he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. And then Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me and all that he has told you. So Samuel, so Samuel told him everything, and hid nothing from him. And Eli said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Thank you, Judith. Let's sing, inspired by love and anger.
I never like not to give you a passage from the gospel. So let me read a gospel passage from Mark's gospel, chapter 6, verses 6b to 13. So the second half of verse 6 until verse 13, uh, 13 in chapter 6. Then Jesus went about among the villagers teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Thanks be to God for his holy word. May the words of my mouth and all our thoughts and reflections be acceptable to God our Lord. Amen. So today is St. Columbus Day. I don't think we've celebrated that for a long time, have we? But today, apparently, on the 9th of June, in 597, was the day when St. Columbus died on Iona. Some of you may not even know who St. Columbus was. Well, he was a high-born prince and thus had probably a lot of privileges. He was born in Ireland and was brought up and well educated and had probably a lot of good connections as well. He was apparently tutored by a priest called Krutmechan or something like that, who taught him the principles of Christian faith and leadership. According to one of his later pupils, Adonan, the young Columba kept his body chaste and mind pure and showed himself, though placed on earth, fit for the life of heaven. That's quite a statement, isn't it? When Columba had grown up, he became thus a monk and later a priest, and he founded many monasteries in his homeland of Ireland. Someone told his story like this. You were not a quiet man. They say that when you preached, you could be heard on mouth the next island to Iona. You were not a quiet man, but then neither were many of God's prophets. They made themselves heard. You'd been born and educated in Ireland, and after your ordination founded many monasteries there, communities of work and worship, centers of literacy and prayer. You loved books, and it was a book that changed your path through life. They say you copied a manuscript belonging to a saint. And when the saint demanded that you give him your copy, you refused. It's all done by hand, no photocopy and no space. And a dispute erupted and turned into a battle and many men died and you were sent into exile. That's part of your story. Was it true like this? Who knows? But we do know that you left Ireland and sailed with 12 months to Scotland and founded a monastery there on a small island called Iona. So far the story told. St. Clumber must have been brave he certainly was well educated. And it sounds also as if he was quick tempered, don't you think? After settling in Iona, he preached to his kinsmen who had settled along the shore of the Scottish coast, west coast. In fact, these Scots of Dalriata, am I saying it right? Yeah. Gave Scotland our name, the Scots of Riata. Columba preached to them, 
but he also wanted to spread the gospel further afield. So he went into Pictland, who lived in the Highlands. St. Columba went with a few friends to visit the Pictish king, Brood MacMilchan, or something like that. They traveled through the Great Glen, and that was a very dangerous journey. So dangerous, in fact, that there is an, a, an account of him meeting a monster. Loch Ness, of course. The Loch Ness monster. Come on. <laughs> They arrived safely in Inverness, where Columba and Brood, the king, became friends. Despite the opposition of Brood's druid advisor, Brilchen. Brood gave Columba the freedom of his kingdom, quite a privilege. And subsequently, Columba became very involved in the local politics of the land. As I said, Columba was very learned. And today we are singing two of his hymns, which are still in our hymn book, the first one and the last one. Under Columbus' leadership, Iona became a major center of learning in his time, and also a center of pilgrimage, because many came to learn their letters and discuss their faith and how to lead life together. And so Iona was I suppose, like Cambridge and Oxford now, it was a center of education until the Vikings came in the 19th, 9th century and destroyed it all and forced the monks to seek refuge in Dunkeld and further afield. But before then, Iona trained and educated many of the men, because it was all men in those days, who went to preach the gospel all over Scotland and further afield. I think some went as far as Germany. This morning we were in our Bible readings reminded of two other prophets longer ago, Moses and Samuel. Like Columba, Samuel was educated and dedicated to God's work early in life. The window which is here to my left and your right, the one nearest um, the, the end of the church here shows Samuel as a little boy being dedicated by his mother to Eli the priest in the temple. Our story played a little later after this event. Eli learning, Eli teaching Samuel and Samuel learning about God sending him messages and speaking um, to him and turning Samuel into his prophet the truth teller of God's word. Moses, on the other hand, was called later. He was called as an adult by God. But like Columba, Moses was brought up in privileged surroundings. They lived with every advancement and privilege they class and class provides and power can give. But Moses was also called by God, in spite of being imperfect, having the death of someone on his conscience, like Columba. Columba had to leave Ireland, we are told, possibly as a form of penance, an exile pilgrimage in God's service. But all three, Moses, Samuel, and Columba, were called by God and strove to live in close relationship with their God. Now, how can you have a close relationship with someone who is invisible, immortal and beyond all human understanding? We are told of Moses having the burning bush experience. Remember the bush that didn't burn up and the vision, the voice coming from within the bush telling Moses to go and liberate the people of Israel from slavery. Samuel learned his trade as a little boy in the temple and had to learn about listening to this inner voice of God. Columba had many famous teachers in his day and all three felt called. Moses heard the I am sending him to Pharaoh Samuel heard God's verdict on Eli and his sons 
and later also ordained the shepherd boy David to be Israel's next king. Columba was sent to Scotland to bring the good news of God's love to all people there. All three knew the invisible, immortal God very close, accessed in prayer, in worship, to gain strength and enable them to act according to God's will in their lives. Some people think we are mad having a faith in a God we can't see. And some people think we have to sign up to all sorts of strange beliefs before we can call ourselves Christian. But not so. They're quite wrong. We don't have to believe odd things that don't fit with, our, with what's going on in the world. We do have to believe, though, something that is strange in many people's experience. We are invited to allow, allow, to allow ourselves to be embraced by God's Spirit. Invisible, yes, but no less real than air. We are invited to be embraced by God's love in order then to go out from here or wherever we worship to share that love with everyone we meet. This is not just a romantic or soppy love, but it is a love which demands our all, demands and equips us also to be brave and honest, guiding us into God's faithful and forgiving grace. Like Samuel, and like Moses, God is calling us. Like Jesus' disciples, who were sent out as well, and like Columba later, God wants to send us to invite people to live in his way, living lives of love, of forgiveness, living lives helping others, to become well and whole. The latest census figures tell us that over 51% of the Scottish population now say they have no religion. Well, that's a chance. We are nearly back where Columba had to begin his work too, among people who know little or nothing about faith in God and the God Jesus of Nazareth was speaking about. God is needing each one of us and needing us to be faithful, live our faith and share it, share God's love bravely and joyfully, not by Bible bashing or frightening people into faith, but by encouraging them to be embraced by God's love and rejoice in all the gifts life brings us. Listen to another bit of Columbus' story. Years later, a monk called Adamnan wrote your biography, a story full of kings, wild birds, a white horse, and of course a monster, the one who lives in Loch Ness, no less. It's well worth a read if you want to know more. You were not a quiet man. You were a priest, a sailor, a scholar, a statesman, a prophet. You made yourself heard. Your followers spread the Christian faith throughout the British Isles and beyond. The island of Iola is still a place of pilgrimage. Its abbey a place of work and learning and prayer. We remember you, Columba. On June the 9th, each year we tell your story and give thanks. Amen.
to your, to you. They are a small portion of what we hold, we know. Let these gifts not fall to the ground, but may they contribute to the growth of your kingdom in this community and in your wider world, meeting the needs of a hurting people. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Some announcements. We've got coffee after the service. Please join us and uh, share a little bit of a chat and your news with each other. And then on Monday, tomorrow night, will be a session meeting at 7.30 here behind me. Tuesday, we'll do our gardening again from 2 to 4. All help. Very welcome if you can come and help us tackle the weeds. Uh, Wednesday, we're doing our morning coffee. Last week we started and we were in the hall because it's just so cold at the moment. So I expect we'll be in the hall again looking at the forecast, but it was still a nice meeting. Uh, so 10.30 on Wednesday until noon. And those ladies and gentlemen who are going uh, with guilt to the uh, outing, do come first for a cup of coffee and then you can go on your outing after that. Saturday is the Canal Festival. So please um, sign up on the list behind uh, to, to do a, a stint on the, our stall uh, to sell the raffle tickets for the, I think we're having a teddy bear from Wall Alley. Yeah, great. And baking stall. And if you can contribute some home baking, that would be lovely. Um, so come and, and help me with the storytelling as well. Oh, I meant to ask, um, has anybody got an IKEA snake? I really would like a, 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 like a soft toy. Yes, please. If I could borrow it, that would be really nice. For an obvious story, you can guess which one. <laughs> um, and if you haven't picked up a, a tower, our summer tower is out. Please help yourself. The copies at the back, uh, and take take one or two to a friend or a relation who would like to to have a good read uh, about our news. There's one more thing. Oh yes, there is the, the bad review for invitation. We've been invited, I'm sorry, I've only kind of got this email to announce this week. Uh, next Sunday, they're going to have a barbecue on the Brunsfield links from 12.30 to three o'clock. And um, you're very welcome to come to it. It's four pounds for an adult or two pounds 50 for school age children. They would like to know numbers though. So if you could either tell me or um, phone them on the phone number that was on the previous slide at least. Is it on there too? Yeah, that's good. Um, and let them know by tomorrow, end of tomorrow's work day. So five o'clock tomorrow, I expect. Um, just for numbers, so they know how many burgers to, to get. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Now we have a, an official announcement to make. Uh, for con concerning the presbytery meeting on the 18th of June. So you now have here Best Church Legalese by Jim. Intimation is hereby given that at a meeting to be held in Palmerston Place Church on Tuesday 18th of June 2024, the Presbytery of Edinburgh and West Lothian will take up consideration of the report of the deployment committee when it will recommend that Presbytery approve an amendment to the approved Presbytery Mission Plan, Edinburgh Mission District A, South West, Barclay Beaufort, Craig Locker, Polworth and Edinburgh St Michael's. The congregation is hereby cited to attend for their interests on the 18th of June 2024 at 7.30 in Palmerston Place Church. In the name and on behalf of the Presbytery of Edinburgh and West Lothian Deployment Committee, by order of the Presbytery of Edinburgh and West Lothian, Dr. Hazel Hasty, Presbytery Clerk. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> We're going to talk about who's going to be official, the official body uh, to that, but you're all welcome to come to it. Uh, it, it says on there to come at half past seven for that bit of the meeting, but it starts at seven o'clock if you want to hear what I have to say in the worship. 
um, come along at 7 o'clock to Palmerston Place on the 18th, so that's not until two weeks time. Um, um, yeah, I think that's everything. Let's sing a hymn as fire is meant for burning. Loving God, we know better than to expect our journey to be free from doubt or danger. Why should we be different from any of the rest of your saints and your servants, Columba included? As we take courage from his example, so we make his prayer our own. Be, O oh Lord, the guiding star above us a smooth path below us, a kindly shepherd behind us, and a bright flame before us, today, tonight, and forever. O Lord, your presence was made known to Moses from a burning bush, to the travelling people of Israel in tablets of stone. You stood next to Samuel and spoke through many prophets. You came to live our life, to suffer and die like us in your Son, Jesus our Lord, to lead us into eternal life through his resurrection. 
and so you called people in new ways. People like Columba, who founded the Abbey, so others would learn of your presence in the very person of Jesus. Lord, draw close to us as we come to you with our prayers for others and ourselves. Inspire us, Lord, for the journey is often rough. Help us to discover the good news to share. We are grateful that our journey included, includes prophets and disciples, pilgrims and neighbors, to influence our faith and knowledge of you. It's a journey that we meet where we meet fellow travelers who challenge and support us. We pray for them. We pray for our fellow travelers, those whom we know, and those who have not yet crossed our path. We pray for folk who speak a different language, for people who live in different ways, and all are your children. Lord, may we be accepting of others and fight for justice and healing for all your children across the world and for your earth on which we live. We pray for our loved ones who've shared our journey and who've joined the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, leaving us grieving and lamenting for the touch of their lives on ours, we give thanks. We pray for your church throughout the world, that your name may be spoken and adored in many different languages and in many different ways. Dear Lord, as we journey, help us to know you better to discover your presence like Moses, Samuel, and Columba did. When we are unaware, you are calling. Catch our attention. Make us stop in our tracks. Allow someone else to point out that you are present. So we rest in your presence. We bring to you now all the joys we celebrate and the tears we shed. Holy One, we delight in your presence and the knowledge that you respond in love to our prayers and the prayers of all your people. Let us respond generously in our living too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is another one which St. Columbus wrote himself. He would have written it in Latin, of course, which we are not so good at, so it's been translated into English. So let's sing Christ is the World Redeemer. <laughs>
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore.